You're watching Silver News Daily. Subscribe for more. Could silver really skyrocket by 500%? According to market analyst Rafi Farber, a historical bull run is just around the corner. In today's video, we'll uncover how his groundbreaking analysis points to an unprecedented surge in silver prices. This isn't just another market prediction. It's a deep dive into economic trends and historical patterns that could make this the most profitable opportunity in years. So why is silver poised for such an explosive increase? Stay tuned, because the answer could change your financial future. I think Alistair McLeod wrote about this a few times, uh, of premiums in China and how China is taking over the pricing um, of silver. Maybe that's true. I, I don't know. He's more of an expert on that uh, angle of the market than I am. But I, I looked at um, from Gold Charts or us the website, <clears throat> and uh, I, I took a look at Chinese premiums, Shanghai over New York, and then tried to correlate them with the silver price. I couldn't find any correlation. Uh, sometimes there was a discount. Sometimes silver prices were high. Sometimes there was a Chinese premium, and other times silver prices were low. I mean, it, it was really hard to tell. Um, but then I was like, okay, so Asia um, and and. There, Alistair was saying that uh, the Chinese are getting worried uh, because we're on the brink of some kind of Asian financial crisis. If you look at the yen. So I was like, okay, so what happened to silver in the last Asian financial crisis? So I went back to 1997 and I saw that, that the, the Asian financial crisis really kicked off in 1997, in July 1997, with the devaluation of the bot. Right? It comes from these, like, these corners that you, people don't even know what a bot is. Or they, they can't even locate Thailand. It's the currency of Thailand. Uh, so uh, they devalued, and then that led to a whole bunch of other devaluations of these small Asian countries. And then when you devalue a currency, it just means you're printing more of it. Uh, and uh, and then the, the purchasing power goes down. So if the purchasing power of the currency goes down, then the purchasing power of the money itself, which is gold and silver, goes up. So what was silver doing back then? Well, it was doubling from July 1997 from the very point that was when silver bottomed. From that point until uh, you know a few months later, maybe six, seven months later, silver had doubled from about 420 to 740. Not quite doubling, but close. So uh, with the yen back at 157 per dollar, about three weeks after this big Bank of Japan um, intervention, right, that costs something like 60 billion dollars, that bur they're burning through their dollar cash reserves. Uh, so now we're back weak and uh, on the yen, and if the yen weakens anymore, then Japan's main trading partners in Asia are going to have trade imbalances that they can't deal with politically, and their exporters will get upset, and then they have to devalue in order to keep pace with the yen. And so you have a, a competitive devaluation in Asian currencies, and what's going to happen? I mean, the Asians are going to go for silver like they did last time. Last time, it didn't last very long, but this time, there's no dollar to fall back on, so it could be even more extreme. I don't know when it's going to start or if it has already started. This is why I watch the end closely, and um, history is going to repeat itself. It always does. Not exactly the same way, but we can expect the metals to go higher. And uh, just, as always, you got to be patient and understand the logic of what's playing out. In recent months, the precious metals market has witnessed a series of remarkable movements, particularly with gold and silver. This surge in prices has caught the attention of investors worldwide, sparking intense discussions and analyses about what might come next. To set the stage, let's look at gold, which has been leading the charge. In an explosive rally earlier this year, gold prices soared to a new all-time high of $2,450 per ounce. This peak was driven by a combination of factors, including heightened geopolitical tensions, economic uncertainties, and a robust demand from central banks and institutional investors. Although prices have since pulled back slightly, gold remains well supported above the crucial psychological level of $2,300 per ounce. This stability suggests there is still significant upside potential. What's driving this robust performance? Central banks around the world have been on a gold buying spree, with the People's Bank of China leading the way. In the first quarter of 2024 alone, global demand for gold reached unprecedented levels, with central banks purchasing a staggering 290 tons. The People's Bank of China, in particular, added 60,000 ounces to its reserves in April, marking the 18th consecutive month of increased holdings. This strategic move aims to diversify reserves away from the U.S. dollar and hedge against potential currency depreciation. But it's not just gold that's been shining. Silver, often considered gold's less glamorous sibling, has also been on a spectacular run. Recently, silver prices surged past $32.50 per ounce, hitting their highest level in more than 12 years. 
This impressive rally has not gone unnoticed, and many market analysts believe it's just the beginning. Historically, silver has shown a pattern of following gold's lead during bull markets, often with more dramatic price swings. For instance, the last time silver prices broke above the $32 mark, the metal went on to trade at $50 per ounce within just 100 days. This rapid escalation highlights silver's potential for quick and substantial gains, particularly when market conditions are favorable. Several key factors contribute to the bullish sentiment around silver. First, the ongoing supply deficit in the silver market cannot be overlooked. According to recent data, the demand for silver has massively exceeded supply for the past few years, a trend that is expected to continue. This supply-demand imbalance is further exacerbated by silver's extensive use in industrial applications, including solar panels, electronics, and various green technologies. The rise of the green economy has significantly boosted silver demand. The solar industry in particular relies heavily on silver for photovoltaic cells, which convert sunlight into electricity. With global initiatives to combat climate change gaining momentum, the demand for silver in these applications is projected to reach new highs. Moreover, the geopolitical landscape has also played a crucial role. Ongoing conflicts and economic uncertainties have led investors to seek safe haven assets, driving up the prices of precious metals. The recent escalation in the Middle East, coupled with other global tensions, has only reinforced this trend, making metals like gold and silver more attractive. Silver's performance has been further buoyed by expectations of U.S. interest rate cuts. The Federal Reserve's dovish stance, combined with the potential slowdown in economic growth, has created an environment where precious metals thrive. Lower interest rates reduce the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding assets like silver, making them more appealing to investors seeking to preserve their wealth. In summary, the current market overview paints a highly promising picture for silver. With gold paving the way and silver exhibiting strong fundamentals, the stage is set for a potential bull run. Central bank actions, industrial demand, supply deficits, and geopolitical factors all converge to create a perfect storm for silver prices. As we move forward, understanding these dynamics will be crucial for anyone looking to capitalize on this burgeoning opportunity. The Asian central banks have dollar reserves, uh, right? So there's probably going to be a rush towards dollars. That doesn't mean that that gold and silver prices are going to go down much because there's a, there's a, a rush to gold and silver now among at least the at least the banks or the financial players, not necessarily the public yet. Um, so I would expect the dollar to strengthen and uh, relative to those currencies and gold and silver to strengthen relative to the dollar, uh, which is what we've been seeing, right? If if you look at uh, at least over you know a longer term, uh, it was five or ten years. I didn't I haven't looked at the chart in a while, but if you look at the dollar index versus gold and silver, the dollar index is doing pretty well. What is it, like 106, 107? I don't even remember the number. But that's historically pretty high compared to you know, what it's been since 2005, 2006. So we have, a, we have a stronger dollar relative to other currencies, and we have gold and silver, uh, gold at record highs, and silver at uh, you know, levels that it's not at very often at all. <laughs> So uh, we'll just ki we'll continue to see that, right? We'll continue to see the dollar strengthening relative, relative to other currencies, but the metal is not really caring and just going up anyway. It, it's so interesting when people talk about a strong dollar, right? And the dollar is so strong. Well, it, as you mentioned, it's only strong relative to other currencies that are falling as well <laughs> in value. So if you test everything or um, compare everything to gold, all the currencies are falling at the same time. Yeah, well, gold is the money and the rest are derivatives of it. Uh, in one in one way or another, um, this is what I, I try to clarify. I try to get people to think in, into these in these terms um, that the the main gold derivative is the dollar. It used to be a silver slash gold derivative before 1873. Now it's strictly a gold derivative, which is itself is unjust and suggests that the end game is not going to be us going back on a gold standard. It's going to be us going back on free market money of a silver currency and a gold currency that's 100 percent back. That's how I see it. And uh, I see all the central banks being kicked out and and laughed off or, or, you know, maybe something violent happens. I don't know. But I think people are going to be pretty upset. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's 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 not going to be good for them. Rafa Farber, a well-respected market analyst and commentator, has recently made waves with his bold prediction that silver prices could skyrocket by 500 percent. Farber's analysis is rooted in a comprehensive examination of economic trends historical patterns, and current market dynamics. 
To understand the basis of his forecast, it's essential to delve into the specific factors he highlights as driving forces behind this anticipated surge. Farber's analysis begins with a historical perspective, looking at past bull runs in the silver market. Historically, silver has shown the capacity for rapid price increases following periods of consolidation. For instance, during the late 1970s, silver prices spiked from around $5 to nearly $50 per ounce in just a few years, driven by high inflation geopolitical tensions, and strong investor demand. Farber draws parallels between those conditions and today's economic environment, suggesting that we are on the cusp of a similar, if not more dramatic, surge. A key element of Farber's prediction is the current state of global economic and monetary policies. Central banks worldwide have been adopting increasingly dovish stances, cutting interest rates, and engaging in quantitative easing to stimulate their economies. The U.S. Federal Reserve, in particular, has hinted at further rate cuts and continued monetary support. These policies tend to weaken fiat currencies, making precious metals like silver more attractive as a store of value. Farber argues that as more investors seek refuge from currency depreciation, demand for silver will surge, driving prices higher. Farber emphasizes the significant supply constraints facing the silver market. According to recent data, global silver production has not kept pace with rising demand, particularly from industrial applications. The silver market has experienced a supply deficit for several years, with demand outstripping supply by millions of ounces annually. This deficit is expected to continue, exacerbated by the growing use of silver in green technologies such as solar panels and electric vehicles. Farber notes that these supply constraints create a strong foundation for higher prices as demand continues to outstrip supply. Industrial demand for silver plays a crucial role in Farber's analysis. Silver is a critical component in various industrial applications, including electronics, photovoltaics, and medical devices. The ongoing transition to a green economy, driven by global efforts to combat climate change, has significantly increased the demand for silver. The solar industry alone accounts for a substantial portion of silver consumption, and this demand is projected to grow as countries invest more in renewable energy sources. Farber believes that this sustained industrial demand will support higher silver prices in the long term, Geopolitical uncertainty is another factor underpinning Farber's bullish outlook on silver. In times of political and economic instability, investors often flock to safe haven assets like precious metals. The current global landscape is marked by numerous sources of tension, including conflicts in the Middle East, trade disputes, and economic sanctions. These uncertainties drive investor demand for silver as a hedge against potential crises. Farber points out that geopolitical tensions have historically led to higher precious metal prices, and the present situation is no different. Investor sentiment and market psychology also play pivotal roles in Farber's analysis. The recent rally in gold has sparked renewed interest in precious metals, including silver. As gold prices have reached new highs, silver is often seen as a more affordable alternative with significant upside potential. This perception can create a positive feedback loop, where rising prices attract more investors, further driving prices up. Farber suggests that as more investors recognize silver's potential, market sentiment will become increasingly bullish, fueling further price increases. Central bank actions are a cornerstone of Farber's argument. Central banks, particularly in emerging markets, have been increasing their holdings of precious metals as a hedge against economic and geopolitical risks. The People's Bank of China, for example, has been a major buyer of gold and silver, diversifying its reserves away from the U.S. dollar. Farber argues that continued central bank accumulation of silver will provide strong support for prices, creating a solid foundation for the anticipated bull run. And the, the objective of modern economics since, especially since Keynes, but even before that, right, since post uh, Adam Smith, is really how can we manipulate the monetary system to steal just the right amount of money that we can make our society look richer than it is when we're really borrowing from the future by stealing from everybody. And uh, and all the academic jargon around messing with the money supply and interest rates and this and that is really goes to that question, like how long can we fool people into thinking they're richer before they figure it out? And then everyone gets surprised when everyone finally figures it out and they realize that they're poor, that we have a crash. And then people are like, well, how did that happen? Well, the the natural consequence of stealing from somebody else is that the the society is poorer because when it comes down to it, the most basic sense 
either you're going to trade and you're both going to get richer on exchange or if so, or one person's going to steal from another person and then that person's going to have less at the expense of the other guy and you and and society's going to be poorer on on um on balance because the guy who gets stolen from is going to stop making stuff and then there's going to be nothing for the other guy to steal if you just take it down to a society of two people either you're going to trade or you're going to steal from each other if you steal from each other you're both going to starve if you trade you're going to get richer Th that's basically it and everything else is just circling around that logic and making it academically palatable for the intellectual bodyguard of the Hohenzollern, as Rothbard puts it. Raphael Farber's analysis begins with an historical perspective, examining past bull runs in the silver market. Historically, silver has shown the capacity for rapid price increases following periods of consolidation. During the late 1970s, silver prices spiked from around $5 to nearly $50 per ounce in just a few years, driven by high inflation, geopolitical tensions, and strong investor demand. Farber draws parallels between those conditions and today's economic environment, suggesting that we are on the cusp of a similar, if not more dramatic, surge. A key element of Farber's prediction is the current state of global economic and monetary policies. Central banks worldwide have been adopting increasingly dovish stances, cutting interest rates, and engaging in quantitative easing to stimulate their economies. The U.S. Federal Reserve, in particular, has hinted at further rate cuts and continued monetary support. These policies tend to weaken fiat currencies, making precious metals like silver more attractive as a store of value. Farber argues that as more investors seek refuge from currency depreciation, demand for silver will surge, driving prices higher. Farber emphasizes the significant supply constraints facing the silver market. According to recent data, global silver production has not kept pace with rising demand, particularly from industrial applications. The silver market has experienced a supply deficit for several years, with demand outstripping supply by millions of ounces annually. This deficit is expected to continue, exacerbated by the growing use of silver in green technologies such as solar panels and electric vehicles. Farber notes that these supply constraints create a strong foundation for higher prices as demand continues to outstrip supply. Industrial demand for silver plays a crucial role in Farber's analysis. Silver is a critical component in various industrial applications, including electronics, photovoltaics, and medical devices. The ongoing transition to a green economy, driven by global efforts to combat climate change, has significantly increased the demand for silver. The solar industry alone accounts for a substantial portion of silver consumption, and this demand is projected to grow as countries invest more in renewable energy sources. Farber believes that this sustained industrial demand will support higher silver prices in the long term. Geopolitical uncertainty is another factor underpinning Farber's bullish outlook on silver. In times of political and economic instability, investors often flock to safe haven assets like precious metals. The current global landscape is marked by numerous sources of tension, including conflicts in the Middle East, trade disputes, and economic sanctions. These uncertainties drive investor demand for silver as a hedge against potential crises. Farber points out that geopolitical tensions have historically led to higher precious metal prices, and the present situation is no different. Investor sentiment and market psychology also play pivotal roles in Farber's analysis. The recent rally in gold has sparked renewed interest in precious metals, including silver. As gold prices have reached new highs, silver is often seen as a more affordable alternative with significant upside potential. This perception can create a positive feedback loop, where rising prices attract more investors, further driving prices up. Farber suggests that as more investors recognize silver's potential, market sentiment will become increasingly bullish, fueling further price increases. Central bank actions are a cornerstone of Farber's argument. Central banks, particularly in emerging markets, have been increasing their holdings of precious metals as a hedge against economic and geopolitical risks. The People's Bank of China, for example, has been a major buyer of gold and silver, diversifying its reserves away from the U.S. dollar. Farber argues that continued central bank accumulation of silver will provide strong support for prices, creating a solid foundation for the anticipated bull run. Finally, Farber incorporates technical analysis into his forecast. He examines historical price patterns, support and resistance levels, and other technical indicators to predict future price movements. His analysis suggests that silver is currently in a strong uptrend, with key resistance levels being tested and broken. This technical perspective, combined with the fundamental factors outlined above, leads Farber to conclude that a 500% increase in silver prices is not only possible but likely. Assets in stocks 
uh, and tech stocks and whatever it is, they, they, they log into their brokerage accounts on interactive brokers or TD Ameritrade and they see a dollar number there and they imagine how much wealth they could purchase with that stuff, with, the, with those dollars that they say that their, their, their brokerage accounts are worth. So why would anyone care what the price of gold and silver are if they're doing fine? Right? They really start panicking or getting, or at least before they panic, they get interested in gold and silver. When When is that? When their stocks aren't doing so well right? and their brokerage accounts are a lot less than they thought they would be. And, and then they suddenly realize they're like, well, gold and silver are heading higher and inflation is what they call inflation. Right? Rising consumer prices are getting worse. And these gold bugs are suddenly they're they're increasing their purchasing power. Maybe I should look at that. But there's no reason for them to even look at it. If let's say gold was four hundred dollars an ounce and the Dow was instead of forty thousand, four hundred thousand, they still wouldn't look at it. That's to do with the ratio. And if you look at the ratio of of silver or gold to the to stocks, stocks are still doing much better than than gold since of course since very much since 2011. But even recently, it's still very very low. Um, <clears throat> that's why this, um, the panic will really come all at once as it did in the, not all at once on the same day, but it'll come like a snowball. And, uh, once, once the Dow to gold ratio or the S and P to gold ratio, whatever ratio you want to choose, once gold really starts outperforming, um, and it, it, incidentally, it has been outperforming since 1971. If you look at a chart of gold versus, versus stocks versus the Dow since 1971, gold is outperforming. Um, but not not since um, since 2011, the last 12, 13 years. Once that changes, you'll get a change. Uh, you'll get a change of uh, of heart from from the the public, the investing public. Um, but it's not going to happen until stocks really start struggling, or inflation eats into the value of their portfolios to such a degree that it doesn't even matter that stocks are rising. Economic indicators play a crucial role in understanding the potential for a significant increase in silver prices. These indicators provide a snapshot of the broader economic environment and help analysts like Rafael Farber make informed predictions. One of the primary indicators is the inflation rate. Inflation erodes the purchasing power of fiat currencies, making tangible assets like silver more attractive to investors. Currently, inflation rates around the world are on the rise due to a variety of factors, including supply chain disruptions, increased government spending, and expansive monetary policies. As the value of money decreases, investors seek assets that retain value over time, and silver has historically been a reliable hedge against inflation. Interest rates are another critical economic indicator. The policies of central banks, particularly the U.S. Federal Reserve, significantly impact interest rates. Lower interest rates reduce the opportunity cost of holding non-yielding assets like silver. With the Federal Reserve and other central banks signaling potential rate cuts in the near future, the environment becomes more favorable for precious metals. Lower interest rates typically weaken the currency, driving more investors towards silver and gold as safer investment options. The U.S. dollar's strength relative to other currencies also influences silver prices. Oh, well, okay, so you have retail. Um, I assume you mean retail demand in the we in the West and premiums are low. Um, well, you know, stocks are doing well. So people are looking, people with enough money to buy gold and silver with, they're looking at their brokerage accounts and they're saying, oh, this is fine. I don't have to protect myself. So demand is low. Uh, and uh, I'd say the, the, the metals are being drained from the big uh, centers, from the big stocks center, metal stock centers. Why is that? Um, it could be, um, you know, big hedge funds. Uh, not hedge funds; they don't they don't invest in physical, but but big big banks, um, you know, uh, getting calling in warrants and putting them into eligible and taking them off for sale. And maybe they want to store them for a while and uh, sell them later at a bigger profit. But in the East, um, I know China's stock market has been doing very poorly, and uh, you know I wish I knew what was going on there. I'd have to go visit, but I don't really want to go <laughs> because China scares me. So uh, I would assume that the public there is a little bit more wary of of, um, of false prosperity now that their their brokerage accounts have been going down. So they also have a um, a stronger tradition uh, with physical metals than Americans do. We haven't had you know big uh, gold culture since I don't know the 1920s 1930s when FDR took it all. So um, 
that's my guess as to the the three prongs of this strange market. But it's all going to come together in the end, and everyone's going to want physical, whether you're a bank or an individual or in the east or the west. It's right now. It's you know it's morphing, and you have this blob going up in different directions. But at some point, it's going to become resonant. And, uh, you know, like singing in a shower, it's going to bounce off itself and these waves are going to start matching. And then you're going to have a glorious sound of gold and silver bugs all abandoning all currencies at the same time. The role of industrial demand in driving silver prices is a critical component of Rafa Farber's bullish outlook. Unlike gold, which is primarily valued for its use as a financial asset and store of value, silver has extensive industrial applications. This dual nature of silver, both as a precious metal and an industrial commodity, creates unique dynamics in its market. One of the most significant drivers of industrial demand for silver is its use in green technologies, particularly solar energy. Silver is a key component in photovoltaic cells, which convert sunlight into electricity. As the world increasingly moves towards renewable energy sources to combat climate change, the demand for solar panels has skyrocketed. Countries worldwide are investing heavily in solar energy infrastructure, and this trend shows no signs of slowing down. The International Energy Agency, IEA, projects that renewable energy will continue to grow rapidly, with solar power playing a pivotal role. This sustained increase in demand for solar panels directly translates to higher demand for silver. The electric vehicle, EV, market is another major source of industrial demand for silver. Silver is used in various components of electric vehicles, including batteries, electrical connections, and charging stations. As governments push for greener transportation solutions and automotive manufacturers ramp up production of electric vehicles, the demand for silver is set to rise. The EV market is expected to see exponential growth in the coming years, further bolstering silver's industrial demand. Beyond green technologies, silver's industrial applications span a wide range of sectors. It is used in electronics due to its excellent electrical conductivity and thermal properties. Silver is found in various electronic devices, including smartphones, tablets, and computers. As the world becomes more technologically advanced, the demand for these electronic devices, and consequently, for silver, continues to grow. Medical applications also contribute to the industrial demand for silver. Silver has antibacterial properties, making it valuable in medical devices and healthcare products. It is used in wound dressings, surgical instruments, and other medical applications to prevent infections and promote healing. The healthcare industry's ongoing innovations and advancements ensure a steady demand for silver in this sector. The industrial demand for silver creates a robust baseline that supports higher prices. Even during periods of economic uncertainty, the need for silver in these various applications remains strong. This steady industrial demand differentiates silver from other precious metals and provides a level of price stability and growth potential. Rafa Farber emphasizes that this industrial demand is not only substantial but also growing. As the global economy transitions towards more sustainable and technologically advanced practices, the reliance on silver is set to increase. This sustained industrial demand is a key factor that underpins Farber's prediction of a significant surge in silver prices. Additionally, the ongoing supply deficit in the silver market amplifies the impact of this industrial demand. For several years, global silver production has struggled to keep pace with rising demand. This supply-demand imbalance creates upward pressure on prices. The continued growth in industrial applications, combined with limited supply, forms a powerful driver for higher silver prices. Farber also points out that the supply constraints are likely to persist. Mining companies face numerous challenges, including environmental regulations, resource depletion, and geopolitical issues. These factors make it difficult to rapidly increase silver production to meet the growing demand. As a result, the existing supply deficit is expected to continue, further supporting higher prices. In conclusion, industrial demand is a cornerstone of the bullish case for silver. The metal's extensive use in green technologies, electronics, medical applications, and other industrial sectors creates a strong and growing demand base. Combined with supply constraints, this industrial demand supports a favorable outlook for silver prices. As the global economy continues to evolve, the importance of silver in various industries will only increase, reinforcing Rafi Farber's prediction of a significant price surge. Can't tell. I look to to make a confession. The the monetary aggregates have been so confusing to me since since COVID 
You know, I uh, I was taught by um, by Bob Wenzel of Economic Policy Journal, the late Bob Wenzel. He passed away in May 2021, and he would calculate the monetary aggregates in terms of the quarterly annualized money supply growth rate. And if it was high, then he would say stocks are doing going to do well. And if it was low, he'd say stocks are going to crash soon. And he was generally right. Um, but since COVID, you know, we just it just went vertical, and now we have this overhang. So how do you calculate it? And uh, we have we still have about five hundred billion dollars left in the reverse repos that are supposed to still, uh, you know, filter into the money supply at some point. Uh, so I'm really at a loss as to how to calculate the money supply anymore and how it would affect stocks. But it, look, it's some, I do know that it's not growing. Right? It's not growing anymore since 2021. The question is how much more debt can can be piled on. Uh, to keep the uh, the aggregates going up and up uh, or up high enough to keep stocks elevated, uh, but I, look, I know that at some point soon it's going to stop because this can't this can't go on uh, in in terms of uh, nailing it down to a time frame. I've been trying to do that since COVID and it hasn't worked, uh, so I'm just going to stay out of the casino because at this point I don't get it, and it's going to end at some point because economics is the study of scarcity and choice and people can't all be rich at the same time, especially when the government is spending so much resources on blowing things up. Geopolitical uncertainty plays a significant role in shaping the demand for silver, and it is a crucial factor in Rafi Farber's bullish outlook. In times of political and economic instability, investors often seek safe haven assets to protect their wealth. Precious metals, particularly gold and silver, have historically been the go-to assets during such times of turmoil. The current global geopolitical landscape is marked by numerous tensions and conflicts. One of the most pressing issues is the ongoing conflict in the Middle East, escalating tensions in this region, including military conflicts and political instability, have created an environment of uncertainty that drives investors towards safe haven assets like silver. The Middle East has long been a hopped of geopolitical risk, and any significant developments there can have a profound impact on global markets. Trade disputes between major economies also contribute to geopolitical uncertainty. For example, the trade tensions between the United States and China have been a source of volatility in global markets for several years. These disputes can lead to economic slowdowns, supply chain disruptions, and increased market volatility, all of which enhance the appeal of precious metals as stable stores of value. Economic sanctions are another factor that adds to the geopolitical risk. Sanctions imposed by one country on another can lead to economic hardships, affecting global trade and financial markets. Countries under sanctions may turn to precious metals to stabilize their economies and protect their wealth, thereby increasing demand for silver. Furthermore, the broader economic and political instability in emerging markets can drive demand for silver. Many emerging economies face challenges such as high inflation, political instability, and economic mismanagement. Investors in these regions often seek to protect their assets by investing in precious metals which are perceived as more stable compared to their domestic currencies and financial instruments. In addition to these specific geopolitical risks, there is also a general sense of economic uncertainty in the world today. The COVID-19 pandemic has left a lasting impact on global economies, and many countries are still grappling with its effects. The pandemic has led to unprecedented levels of government spending and monetary easing, which have created concerns about long-term economic stability and inflation. These concerns drive investors to seek refuge in assets like silver, which have historically maintained their value during times of economic distress. Farber points out that these geopolitical factors have historically led to higher prices for precious metals. During times of heightened geopolitical risk, demand for silver tends to increase as investors look for safe haven assets. This increased demand puts upward pressure on prices, contributing to the potential for a significant price surge. Moreover, central banks around the world have been accumulating precious metals as part of their reserve management strategies. This trend is particularly evident in emerging markets where central banks are seeking to diversify their reserves away from the US dollar. The People's Bank of China, for instance, has been a major buyer of silver and gold, adding substantial amounts to its reserves. This central bank activity not only supports higher prices, but also reflects the broader market's recognition of the value of precious metals in times of geopolitical uncertainty. In summary, geopolitical uncertainty is a critical factor driving the demand for silver. The current global landscape, marked by conflicts, trade disputes, economic sanctions, 
and general economic instability creates an environment where investors seek the safety of precious metals. This demand for safe haven assets, combined with central bank accumulation, supports Rafi Farber's prediction of a significant surge in silver prices. As these geopolitical risks continue to evolve, they will play a vital role in shaping the future of the silver market. We are not where we were uh, on, with silver squeeze, even though we are there numerically in the dollar range. Uh, we're not there uh, in terms of excitement, which gives us a lot more fuel to the uh, to the rise, right? Like uh, not slope of a wall of worry, right? Wall of worry. Uh, you have more fuel, the less people know about it. Uh, premiums are down. I think junk silver is at nine percent, as opposed. Uh, to what it was at the top of like 45%. Uh, and ETFs are still draining. SLV is uh, still very low holdings. So uh, we're at the very beginning here. And even though we're at, we're at 30, we're still uh, not quite through resistance on a silver versus commodities scale. Right? So you can look at silver being 30 and be like, oh yeah, silver's in a bull market. But if it's not higher than other commodities or relative to other commodities, then we're not really in a silver bull market. We're just in a commodities bull market. Uh, so we're at a, a resistance uh, in silver versus commodities right now. And uh, the only time it was higher than this was during the uh, the lockdown period when things were a little bit nutty. So if we just cut that out and say, you know, that was insanity uh, and uh, look at normal-ish, at least in, in context, of what what normal seems to us, which is pretty weird anyway, then we are at a triple top resistance. And once we break through that, then I think silver will be in a bull market in terms of other commodities. So that's where I think we are. And uh, we should see the gold to silver ratio descend as, as uh, in, uh, price inflation gets worse and worse. Uh, maybe we'll talk about this later because as we, uh, I, I was doing some research and I saw that George Gammon had made a video of trying to exchange gold and silver in Argentina. And he found that silver was actually a lot more liquid than gold. He couldn't get currency, he couldn't get a functional currency in exchange for gold at, at market, anywhere near market levels, which makes sense because gold for a consumer is not very liquid. It's liquid for banks when you're for bank money, but uh, on a consumer level, you'll need silver, which is why when, uh, when gold derivatives no longer work or uh, currencies, we call them, when they no longer work, you're going to have to go to silver, and that's going to be the market force that drives us closer to a 15 to 1 ratio. The central bank actions are a cornerstone of Rafa Farber's argument for the potential surge in silver prices. Central banks have a profound influence on global financial markets through their monetary policies and reserve management strategies. In recent years, there has been a notable trend of central banks increasing their holdings of precious metals, including silver, as a hedge against economic and geopolitical risks. One of the most significant actions has been taken by the People's Bank of China. Over the past few years, China has been aggressively adding to its reserves of gold and silver. In April alone, the People's Bank of China added 60,000 ounces of gold to its reserves, marking the 18th consecutive month of increased holdings. This strategic move is part of China's broader effort to diversify its reserves away from the US dollar and protect against currency depreciation. By accumulating precious metals, China aims to enhance the stability and security of its financial system in the face of global economic uncertainties. This trend is not limited to China. Central banks and other emerging markets have also been increasing their reserves of precious metals. These actions are driven by a desire to reduce reliance on the US dollar and to safeguard their economies against potential crises. As more central banks follow this path, the demand for silver and gold continues to rise, providing strong support for higher prices. Farber argues that these central bank actions create a solid foundation for a bull market in silver. The accumulation of precious metals by central banks reflects a growing recognition of the risks associated with fiat currencies and the benefits of holding tangible assets. As central banks continue to build their reserves, the increased demand for silver is likely to drive prices higher. In addition to reserve accumulation, central banks' monetary policies also play a crucial role in influencing silver prices. The U.S. Federal Reserve, along with other major central banks, has adopted a dovish stance in recent years, cutting interest rates and engaging in quantitative easing to stimulate their economies. 
These policies have led to a weakening of fiat currencies and have made non-yielding assets like silver more attractive to investors. Lower interest rates reduce the opportunity cost of holding silver, thereby increasing its appeal as a store of value. The Federal Reserve's dovish stance is expected to continue, with further rate cuts anticipated in the near future. This environment of low interest rates and expansive monetary policies creates favorable conditions for precious metals. Investors seeking to preserve their wealth in the face of currency depreciation and economic instability are likely to turn to silver, driving up demand and prices. Farber's analysis also highlights the importance of technical indicators and market psychology. Technical analysis involves examining historical price patterns, support and resistance levels, and other indicators to predict future price movements. Farber's technical analysis suggests that silver is currently in a strong uptrend, with key resistance levels being tested and broken. This bullish technical outlook, combined with the fundamental factors discussed earlier, reinforces the case for a significant price surge. Market psychology also plays a crucial role. As silver prices begin to rise, more investors are likely to take notice and jump into the market, creating a positive feedback loop. This phenomenon known as FOMO, or fear of missing out, can lead to rapid price increases as more investors seek to capitalize on the upward momentum. Farber suggests that as more investors recognize the potential for substantial gains in silver, market sentiment will become increasingly bullish, further fueling the rally. In conclusion, central bank actions are a pivotal element in the bullish case for silver. The accumulation of precious metals by central banks, particularly in emerging markets, reflects a strategic move to diversify reserves and protect against economic risks. These actions, coupled with dovish monetary policies and favorable technical indicators, create a strong foundation for higher silver prices. As investor sentiment becomes more bullish and demand continues to rise, the stage is set for a significant surge in silver prices, supporting Rafa Farber's prediction of a 500% increase. Yeah, that's what happened in the last three times, so 115 to 1, it's what's going to happen now, because really it's it's the public waking up all at the same time, and is as much as the 1%, I don't even like to use that term because it's political, but as much as the rich and the banks, uh, how much financial power they have, how much monetary power they have, the public has way more power than them uh, because there's just so much more of us. Uh, so when we when we wake up, we really bring silver up there. And the, fir the first real crime against the monetary system was 1873. Um, not many people know that because it's not, it's not no one was alive for that. It was 151 years ago. And uh, interesting, I'm, I'm reading this uh, diary now of uh, the Great Depression written by a guy named Benjamin Roth in the 1930s, working class lawyer uh, in Youngstown, Ohio in the 1930s, not an, econom not an economist, not writing from an academic perspective at all. And, he's, and he was talking about uh, the daughter of William Jennings Bryan, I forgot what her name was. But she was saying, oh, this is what my father was saying. If we go off the, sil the bimetallic standard, if we go off the silver standard, this is going to happen. And we got to go back to silver. And then Benjamin Roth is like, I got to read about this. I have to understand what she's talking about and what this free silver movement is and what a bimetallic. And then he reads a whole, <laughs> there's this one entry where he's like, he reads all these books about it and all these ec economist books and monetary books. He's like, I've come to the conclusion nobody knows what they're talking about. Now that we have explored the various factors driving the potential surge in silver prices, it's time to bring it all together and understand why Rafi Farber's prediction of a 500% increase is not just possible, but highly probable. The convergence of several key factors creates a perfect storm for a historic bull run in silver. Firstly, the economic environment is ripe for precious metals. With inflation rates climbing and fiat currencies depreciating, investors are increasingly turning to tangible assets like silver to preserve their wealth. The Federal Reserve and other central banks are expected to continue their dovish monetary policies, keeping interest rates low and further weakening fiat currencies. This monetary landscape makes non-yielding assets like silver more attractive, as the opportunity cost of holding them is significantly reduced. Supply constraints are another critical element. Global silver production has not kept pace with the rising demand, particularly from industrial applications. The green technology sector, with its heavy reliance on silver for solar panels and electric vehicles, is driving this demand to new heights. The supply deficit, exacerbated by the challenges faced by mining companies, ensures that demand will continue to outstrip supply, putting upward pressure on prices. Industrial demand for silver is robust and growing. The ongoing transition to a green economy is a major driver. Solar energy, a key component of renewable energy strategies worldwide, 
relies heavily on silver. The electric vehicle market is also expanding rapidly, with silver playing a crucial role in batteries and other components. This sustained industrial demand creates a solid foundation for higher silver prices, independent of its role as a safe haven asset. Geopolitical uncertainty adds another layer of support for higher silver prices. Conflicts, trade disputes, and economic sanctions contribute to a volatile global environment, prompting investors to seek refuge in stable assets. Silver, along with gold, has historically been a preferred safe haven investment during times of turmoil. The current geopolitical landscape, marked by numerous tensions and uncertainties, is likely to drive continued demand for silver as a protective measure. Central bank actions are pivotal in this scenario. Central banks, particularly in emerging markets, are diversifying their reserves away from the U.S. dollar and increasing their holdings of precious metals. The People's Bank of China, among others, has been a significant buyer of silver, reflecting a strategic move to hedge against economic and currency risks. This accumulation of silver by central banks provides strong support for prices and underscores the metal's importance in the global financial system. Technical analysis and market psychology further bolster the case for a silver bull run. Silver is currently in a strong uptrend, with key resistance levels being tested and broken. This technical strength, combined with the fundamental factors discussed, suggests that silver is poised for significant gains. Market psychology, driven by fear of missing out, FOMO, can create a positive feedback loop, attracting more investors and driving prices higher. In conclusion, the alignment of these factors points to a highly favorable outlook for silver. The economic environment, characterized by inflation and dovish monetary policies, creates a strong demand for tangible assets. Supply constraints and robust industrial demand provide a solid foundation for higher prices. Geopolitical uncertainty drives investors to seek safe haven assets, while central bank actions further support silver prices. Technical indicators and market psychology suggest that silver is in a strong uptrend, poised for significant gains. Rafi Farber's prediction of a 500% increase in silver prices is grounded in a comprehensive analysis of these factors. As the stars align, the stage is set for an unprecedented bull run in silver. Investors who recognize and act on this opportunity stand to benefit immensely as silver prices surge to new heights. It's a confluence of economic, industrial, geopolitical, and psychological factors that makes this historic bull run not just possible, but highly likely. Don't miss out on what could be the most profitable opportunity in years. Stay informed, stay invested, and watch as silver take center stage in the global financial markets. Remember, this is not financial or investment advice. Always conduct your own research and consider your financial situation and goals before making investment decisions. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful market analysis and updates.